Nazis, zombies. This is my kind of movie. <laughs> nice. Um, but it's also a really solid war film. And you guys have this incredible sequence right out of the gate with that aerial plane. Can you talk me through a little bit what that was like to shoot? Hard. hard. <laughs> it looked yeah. hard. It was hard. hard. It was yeah. seven days. Uh, you couldn't really get out, or maybe five days. You couldn't get out of the plane once you were up there because it was raised about 30, 40 feet in the air. Yeah. And it was hot, it was stinky. You had pair parachutes on that kind of crunched your back, so you're up in there for the tin can for five hours, and it was just difficult. And then the plane starts shaking, and you're trying to, you know. Yeah, and we, I don't know, did you just say that? We had, and we had all, you know, 50 pounds of gear on the paratrooper yeah, gear, right. which is like, which weighs you down. So yeah, when we finally, we'd probably get off that, that rig, what? every three hours we'd get off or something yeah. like that. We tried to make it like scheduled breaks around like three hours or so. And you have, you know, 20, 30 guys in these parachute, you know, uniforms. And everyone's trying to get out and just <laughs> going down these staircases. You can't maneuver, you have weapons. It was just, it was, it was, hard. It was tough. And, and, and also the, um, so they built, they built this, I don't know what you call it, a gimbal or whatever, but these, it was on, the plane was actually on these huge mechanical stilts, basically, which they had this, they'd built, you know, they must have spent a ton of money on this thing, and it basically would make the thing rock as more turbulence came, and, you know, they could control it and do all this stuff. And within 10 minutes of doing it, they were like, yeah, it's not, you guys are just going to have to shake in your seat. So <laughs> there was that at the point that we were just doing yeah, right, right, right. right. <laughs> It looks great, though, man. <laughs> it does look great, so your hard work was worth it. Yeah. Um, the other thing I love is that it's, it's pretty clear that you guys got to work with some practical effects when it comes to the monster elements. Yeah. As performers, what does that mean to you to have something real to interact with there? It's really important, and uh, for this, it, I think it showed why doing other things that have been mostly CGI, you don't know what's there. You don't really know what you're reacting to. There's a guy with a, like a tennis ball and a green suit like acting like a 40-foot monster, and it's like <laughs> not the same. And uh, because the story allowed for practical elements to be made, to be done in the movie, the way they built them were they built them so well that when you looked across the room and you see somebody who's actually transforming and they look like they have veins coming out and it's real, it does you don't have to imagine it's there. You're yeah. doing it. It's in front of you. And that scene is, you know, probably the best example of it when he transforms. Yeah, they did an amazing job with the prosthetics and stuff like that. I mean, the the attention the the level of detail they have in it is like really incredible. That was a cool scene too. Yeah. <laughs> like <that. coughs> um, how is it for you guys dealing with the bad robot level of secrecy and how happy are you now to be able to actually talk about this thing? <laughs> I mean, we still can't really talk about <laughs> everything, you know, I'm gonna leave some things a surprise, but it's, you know, it, at times it can be a, a little difficult, but, um, but luckily you can trust JJ. I mean, uh, I was saying before, we, we didn't have the actual script, or at least Ian and I didn't have the actual script until we were ready to go, until we got the job and we're ready to go. So you're putting a lot of faith in um, in people. Um, and, you know, luckily with JJ you can, and with Billy Ray and Mark, you, you know that they're great writers and tell wonderful stories. So, um, it's a little. It can be a little. You, you know, you're you're chomping at the bit because you want to see it. You want to know what's going on, uh, but you know, you, you just trust them and you get by. Yeah. yeah. It's a leap of faith. A leap yeah. of faith. Yeah. How many How many people have been like, is it a Cloverfield movie? Yeah. There was a lot of that in the beginning. I but guess. Also, there was a lot of us. Cause even we didn't even on know. On set, actually. we were kind of going, is this a right? <laughs> we kind of even didn't even. It's know true. That. Yeah. I remember the last one they made, like the guys didn't know they were making it until later. Yeah. Right. So you, you could have been. Yeah, <laughs> right. Very, yeah, yeah, exactly. Very, yeah. <laughs> so you guys also, um, it's a big movie, but it's a pretty small group of characters, and you guys went through that training together. What was that experience like coming out of that and then going into shooting? It was really invaluable, the, the boot camp, uh, for loads of different reasons. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, um, in a military sense, learning, learning um, about uh, you know I've I've not I don't have any experience of that kind of world, um, and also it gave you a small I think insight into you know we go out these night patrols sometimes and a small insight to what it would be to be a young guy that's you know th thrown into a into a, a, a soldier's uniform and taken into an, another country and and not knowing where the where the enemy is and you know 
Um, and but then also just the bonding experience. You know, we, it was tough. We would go out, we'd do personal training and do all these, you know, do the night patrols and get up early and, and all that kind of stuff. But at night time, we would sit around the campfire and just get to know one another. Yeah. And um, there was a, there was a history that was kind of created there. I think. And, I mean, it even it kind of gave us a, a natural rhythm that I, I think helps make the relationship in the film work. Yeah. We just started learning kind of each other's rhythms and how everyone's sense of humor and how people operated and it, it just really brought us together. Yeah. Your dynamic with the child actor is one <laughs> oh, of like the yeah, highlights Johnny. of the film. Yeah, it's yeah. Good, isn't it? And you know what they always say about working with kids and animals, but I always hear that's actually not true and it's fun to work with kids. That guy's 56 years old. He <laughs> oh my God, he <laughs> great. There is, yeah. and he, French and he, water. <laughs> um, he, no, he was wonderful. He's a, a young kid um, from outside of Paris. Uh, one of the first things he's done, just a total sweetheart, um, a little rambunctious too. Um, <laughs> Could you say sweetheart? I remember there was many a time. He's a little, he's he'd a tap little. you on the shoulder and you turn and you go, hey man, how's it going? And he would just punch you as hard as he could. <laughs> like the but you know what, I feel like I was that way when I was a kid, so, um, so I, yeah. uh, they, Julius, uh, with some sort of stroke of genius, paired us together, I guess, but, uh, yeah, it was really, it was really, he's really, really great. lovely. He's yeah, a good little working with him. He was really great, too. He was yeah. great in the movie. Yeah, he's a little scene stealer. Yeah, yeah. yeah so totally. Yeah. This is kind of a different role for you as well, getting to play the grizzled tough guy a little bit. Did you, did you lean into that? Did you enjoy it? I, yeah, I did. I, I had fun doing, doing it because it was different and it was uh, exciting to be something else. You know, you always try and mix it up a little bit. You don't want to be doing the same thing over and over again. And this was a this was made so much fun by the people you got to do it with. I mean, I know that sounds cheesy, but but it was because if sometimes you, if you feel if you I think if I felt like I was on an island, that like I'd be like fuck, I'm not doing a good job, or you know, there's a million times where people can were like picking everybody up. That's the definition of having great people in the cast. So it wasn't just about really you know what you were doing. It was about what everybody was doing, and everybody fed off that, which was pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, for you, you have that big scene. Did you have to do any special, like, physical training to prepare for those moments? Yeah, I remember little. all the training that we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it was grueling. Really a lot of yoga. No, do you know, actually, one, I actually <laughs> do remember there was one point where, uh, I, I don't know if we've talked about it since, where, like, at the end of the, <laughs> with good reason, it's oh, not yeah. in the final cut of the movie, where basically there's this moment where I get up, where, but these two are just unloading their clips on me big time and I I they wanted me to do it like react to the bullet <laughs> but it, but when you watch it back I, I, it, really, it just looks like I'm auditioning for a Bee Gees that's the day I learned I like a dad I thought there was something different I was like wait yeah so they, they so, right. so I mean they cut it <laughs> but you, were, you had the moves. You were really good. Uh, but do you know what was so nice is I couldn't get this thing, and I was like, "Hey, Julius was coming in, and it, it would be really patient with me." And I just remember like uh, everyone kind of coming up to me and just being like, "You get there." <laughs> it was being really nice. You never told me. Clearly, yeah. terrible. Well, you said, will. You'll get there. Yeah. He yeah. didn't. But you know.